Hello, my name is Sean Ennis with Ennis Management and thank you for joining me once again on the Creative Collective. And today I'm joined by a very special guest, singer, multi-talented instrumentalist, songwriter, producer, and recording engineer, Paul Starr. Hello, hello. So let's start off with, where, where are you from? I'm from uh, uh, it's a Creek cre community called uh, Decessity and Washkaganish. Uh, they're both located in uh, northern Quebec here in Canada. And I, I moved to Ottawa to pursue music and also to go to school. Okay, excellent. So let's start with, you got a pretty extensive music history. So I want to really start from the beginning. Um, when you were when you were younger, did you take any sort of singing lessons or music instrument lessons? Um, actually, no. I uh, you know I learned from my uh, my father. He's uh, he's also a, a musician, and also I have. My uncles uh, used to play in the band in the seventies. Okay, excellent. Which, so you come from a music music family. Yes. Okay, and how did you uh, get your start in the music industry? You know, I uh, I started learning how to play guitar, and you know, for about a couple of years and I started learning other instruments as well. Then I became uh, a songwriter at, at the age of uh, 13. Then I started playing in the band uh, around 14 to 15. Okay. And I, uh, so and what, I what are some of the instruments that, that you know how to play? So the instruments I know how to play now is uh, guitar, bass, keyboards, uh, drums. Sometimes I use drum machines to, uh, you know, like to create music. And then what sort of made you want to start writing your own original music? Uh, first, first I started learning how to play uh, songs, you know, like, you know, like, uh, Brian Adams, Bon Jovi, Guns N' Roses, um, you know, I started, uh, developing my own songwriting skills. Okay. And so, how old were you when you formed your band? When I formed my band, I was, uh, I was 15. We played for uh, for a year and a half, and I went solo for a little while, and I formed a new band at 17 till uh, 19. Then, and after that, I moved to Ottawa uh, at the age of 20, and you know, I went to school, and uh, at that time, they didn't offer music programs then on the on the 2008 I I attended uh, I guess they call it uh, genre arts and science intro to music industry okay I want to um, go back that first band that you started uh, what was the name of it? What kind of music did you play? And who were the members in, involved in the band? Okay, uh, the first band uh, it was it was called Cree, uh, K R E E. Um, we played uh, rock songs, and if I can remember, I mean, it was like really long time ago. I was uh, the lead singer and a guitarist, and <clears throat> um, the bass player uh, John Sapu. Uh, 
Philip Rupert, uh, the drummer. Um, uh, there was another uh, lead singer, Stanley Swallow. Uh, he was uh, a rhythm guitarist. And my little brother, Jeremy Natash. Uh, he was a, a background singer on keyboards. And what genre of music did you guys play? Oh, um, we played rock, mostly. Um, we played the songs of uh, Bon Jovi and uh, Guns N' Roses. And what did you learn from that experience? It was kind of your first time uh, being in a band and performing with other musicians. What, what was something that you learned from, from that experience? The experience uh, I gained was uh, stage presence. Um, you know, like, uh, you gotta have to, used to feel uh, confident, you know, performing in front of uh, the audience. And, you know, I kind of built my, my confidence through there. And, you know, I also uh, started performing my own songs with that band, you know, kind of show off my, my songwriting skills. Okay, now can you talk about the the next band that you were a part of? Okay, the next band I was part of was called Street Play. Um, and also I was uh, the lead singer, uh, guitarist. Um, my little brother Jeremy Napash was also, also uh, uh, I guess I could say like he was doing vo vocal uh, harmonies, keyboards. Um, my lead guitarist Kyle Jonah, uh, Sean Hester, uh, the, the bass player, and Roger Bearskin, the drummer. And we played uh, mostly alternative rock. Sometimes it was kind of like uh, hard rock and soft rock. And can you describe sort of the feelings and emotions that you experience when you're on stage performing in front of an audience? Yes. Um, the, the feeling they... The feelings that I get before before uh, I go on stage, you know, I feel nervous, and you know, as soon as I start performing, and you know, uh, all that feeling is gone. You know, I feel more. Uh, I guess I got to say, like that, that nervousness is not there anymore, and I just keep doing my. I just keep doing my thing, you know, like showing off my my talent and you know kind of between songs I I tell the the crowd you know what the song's about and that's a really important um, sort of tool as a performer to interact with the audience in between your songs if you give a little backstory Doing that, is that something that you found helps you interact with the audience? Yeah, it kind of helps, uh, it kind of helps, um, you know, get them on a personal level, you know, understand, you know, my, my, uh, I guess I could say, like, my, my music and, you know, what I'm promoting and kind of, you know, it's, that's how we uh, interact with each other and, you know, they, they, they tell their friends, you know, about my music. And you mentioned that you went to um, some sort of liberal arts or, or music school. Can you, can you talk about that experience? I went to uh, I went to 
school, I found college, you know, uh, for that music industry arts program. And it kind of showed me how to work in the professional studio with, with the state of the art uh, uh, music equipment. And it kind of showed me how to use uh, different techniques, you know, like, uh, different microphones, uh, how to mic uh, a certain uh, instrument or uh, uh, guitar amps or uh, bass, even uh, how to mic up uh, the drums uh, properly, and you know how how to use um, SSL, uh, how to use uh, a DAW such as Pro Tools and kind of showed me how to uh, uh, how to <clears throat> how to mix and master the songs properly and kind of showed me how to use uh, shortcuts as well. And since you are such um, an experienced engineer, what's what's a piece of advice that you could give to musicians that are trying to mix and master um, in their home studio. What's a piece of advice that you could help them, help them out with? Okay. So, uh, what I used to do before, you know, like before taking this program, uh, you know, like you need the proper uh, uh, acoustic environment to hear. Uh, all the frequencies, what's going on inside the studio. Uh, sometimes uh, it really depends how how big big of their room is. You know how big is your studio monitors are. You know, like it, it will help to uh, to hear all the frequencies. Um, you know what's going on in your mix, and <clears throat> I would say that. I would just say to uh, take uh, take these courses to learn how to how to be your own engineer. So you think getting um, formal educational training for music was something that you that you would recommend for other musicians? That's correct. Usually, uh, when I first started using those programs, you know, I didn't I didn't know how to mix or master my own music. Um, you know, I would ask uh, different producers or engineers, you know, how can you do that? And they <clears throat> they they told me you have to go to school for that. And you know, but there there are so many uh, YouTube tutorials, <clears throat> uh, you know, for that stuff. You know, at the same time, you have to understand how everything works. And so, when did you begin your work producing? <clears throat> I started producing. Uh, Maybe like around early two thousands, uh, was <clears throat> uh, mostly for my own music. Uh, I started producing for others in two thousand ten, and you know I, I was only making beats. Uh, you know I didn't know how to mix and master um, the other artists. That I worked with, you know, they had to use uh, separate engineers to, uh, I guess, to bring bring those tracks into uh, professional uh, quality. And what are some of the genres that you've produced original music in? Um, you can you can find. Find them on YouTube. One one of the artists that I worked with is uh, if you go on YouTube, uh, type uh, as 
Prospects. Uh, the song name is uh, Hunger Pains, featured uh, Susha T and Young Buck. And is that that's hip hop? That's yeah, that's that, that's hip hop. And do you produce for any other genres of music? Um, I do have my uh, my my first album called uh, Lost, you know, under my name uh, Paul Napash, and it's it's on all. Uh, you can find it on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, and all those other uh, platforms. And it's all in uh, alternative rock. And can you talk a little bit about that album? What What's the title? It's it's uh, the the title is called Lost. It's uh, it's kind of like. Uh, One second. It's it's about uh, you know when you feel lost, you know you, you don't know what you know you don't know what to do. Sometimes you know you don't know where where to go. And and I you know it's, it was really uh it was really hard to uh, uh it was a hard project for me personally. Uh, and somehow it's just uh, some songs are uh, are uh, love songs. Some of them are just you know like finding love. Or <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of like a, a mixed mixed project. And I think a lot of artists really make their best music when you know they they experience something in life that brings out emotion whether it be sadness or or happiness um is that sort of the same type of thing you were going through during this album were you going through some turmoil personally uh yes i guess you could say that um at that time uh, you know, I was I was with my uh, my my fiance. Um, you know, like we were broken up for uh, three years, and you know, I was going through that time. You know, like I was trying to find someone, and you know, like it was it was really hard for me. And then we got back together. It was, you know, I was really happy. <laughs> I could say. And what were some of the uh, song titles from this album? Um, this, okay, um, the first title is uh, Lost. Hold on, I don't, <laughs> I don't have the... Uh, I'm gonna... Okay, I'm just gonna... Like, I can't see the, the title right now, I'm just... Uh, I'm just gonna remember like what the song titles are. Um, the second song is called "The Learning." Uh, the next one is called "Breed," and the next one I think is called uh, "Forever." Uh, what's going on? The illusion. And the last one is called uh, Jaban. It means a uh, uh, great uh, grandmother. And you know, like I lost, I lost her in 2011. You know, it was really hard for me. And I, while recording that album, I actually recorded that song the same. Uh, Around the same time, I think, when uh, when I lost her. And you have a website where people can go to see some of your work, correct? 
Yes. And what's the name of your website? It's called uh, palmapashmusic.com. And what can people expect when they go to your website? Um, you can see you can see my uh, my music and uh, the artists you know, that are signed to my label. Uh, you can find their their songs on there too, and also I created uh, a Spotify playlist. You know, uh, the, you know everything they have. Uh, you know everything they like, and some of my artists uh, on there. And so you mentioned your label. What's the name of your label? And who are some of the artists that are signed to your label or that your label works with? Uh, um, you know, I... Uh, the artists that are signed to my label are... Uh, uh, CJ Gris, uh, Silas Katabatic, uh, Richie Paj, uh, Rob Webb, uh, oops, okay, um, um, Visible, and uh, <laughs> hold on a sec. Um, <clears throat> that sounds like a pretty solid roster. Can you um can you talk about each of these artists? Uh, like sort of what what genre of music and what kind of style of music they make. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Uh, so Rob Webb creates uh, country. He uh, he came to my uh, my previous studio before and we recorded three songs. And I think he's ready to. Uh, to record an album and uh, okay CJ Gris uh, he does hip hop he makes his own beats uh, he does uh, music workshops uh, he does, uh, okay Silas Kalabatic he uh, he finished record recording his uh, his debut album on my uh my last uh, on, on my previous studio we recorded about 10 songs together Manny Wan Manny Wan is a he's a hip hop uh, slash country he does country and, uh, and sometimes he, he raps uh Who's next here? Uh, Sifania. Uh, he's, he's a UK based artist. He's a, he does R&B, uh, blues. Uh, I think he does uh, R&B. No, R&B. Yeah, R&B blues. Um, Arrow. He... Uh, He's a EDM producer, so right now he's uh, he's working on getting his uh, album together. You know, like I think he uh, he, he he does have a few songs uh, on uh, Spotify, and myself, uh, Paul Star, I do. Uh, alternative rock uh, slash pop and you know I help I help my artists produce their music as well and did I hear you mention that you're working with an artist from the UK the UK yes yeah he's uh, <clears throat> if 
you listen to uh, Sam Smith, you, you'll kind of hear that voice, a mixture of, uh, uh, what's the artist, uh, I forgot that name now, um, he does like different uh, vocal styles. And how did you link up with an artist from the UK? Um, we started talking through uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I guess he was looking for. Uh, I guess he was looking for a, a label to work with, and you know, I told him, you know, I'm actually starting my own label, and you know, would you be would you be interested in signing with us? And you know. Shortly after, he uh, he agreed to uh, work with me, and you know, like he uh, he also does his own music, and you know, writes all his songs. And what attracts you to an ar artist? What makes you want to work with them? Um, I guess I guess when you. Uh, um, these artists, they, they, you know, like, they reach out to me, and, or sometimes I, uh, you know, I've known them for a while, and, you know, I just follow them, and, you know, and I started talking to them, and, and Ricky Patch is from the, from the states, actually, uh, she's a female uh, rap artist, and you know, we we have a we have a song together, and and uh, uh, C J Grizz, you know, we uh, it's under under my uh, my uh, my artist name Paul Star, and. You can find that song on uh, on uh, Spotify. It's called uh, Famous. Is there a label owner or music executive that you've been influenced by? Um, when I uh, when I got this idea originally, uh, I was signed to uh, a New York based uh, label called. Uh, Bentley Records. Uh, I was with them for one year, and you know, it kind of gave me an idea. You know, after, after I'm done with them, I'll probably uh, start my own my own label, and that's what happened. And what was that experience like working with Bentley Records? Um, they were awesome. They uh, they offered uh, free mastering, um, graphic design, and you know, uh, at that time I was really busy with school. You know, I didn't have much time to uh, to really work on my music. You know, like I released two tracks with them, and you know, like <clears throat> I I learned from them. And you know, see how they promote their artists, and it kind of shows me, you know, like how to uh, how to pr pr promote uh, a product, and you know, uh, learning about uh, you know how to do PR work. How can an artist grow their fan base? start with the artist first you know um, they have to uh, make uh, a good product you know make or a, a good song or I could say a great <laughs> uh, a great song to uh, you know to have people interested in their uh, their music 
service or whatever it is they're trying to uh, accomplish. And, you know, you can do your own PR work, you know, uh, reach out to radio stations, uh, you know, or uh, blogs, or you could uh, create their own websites, you know, with all their uh, social media networks, their songs, videos, and, you know, I guess <clears throat> sign up sign up with the music festivals you know to uh, show off their uh, their songs what advice do you have for musicians just starting out in their music career okay uh, no, I could I could say uh, is keep uh, keep honing your your craft uh, you know keep practicing because practicing is the most important thing you know you can do to uh, improve your uh, artist quality um, and whatever whatever it is you're trying to create and you know like you can always uh, team up with uh, you can either f form a band or you know, if a solo artist is that what you would do best, you know, like, it's always important to network with uh, music professionals and always, uh, always grow your fan base by reaching out to, uh, uh, <laughs> reaching out to uh, your fans that you already have or use uh, social media uh, uh, sponsored ads to uh, reach new fans. That's really great advice. So what inspires you to make music? What inspires me to make music? Uh, whenever I listen to uh, different artists on uh, Spotify, I listen to uh, Post Malone. Uh, I listen to uh, Tech Nine, Eminem, uh, Kendrick Lamar, uh, Snoop Dogg. And sometimes I still go back to these uh, early 2000s uh, music. You know, that's what inspired me to uh, make hip hop. What makes you different from other musicians? Uh, what makes me different is that I can do uh, multiple uh, genres. And, you know, like sometimes I do combine with the uh, 80, 80 synths uh, style. And sometimes I do uh, kind of like a funky uh, bass riffs and sometimes I do uh, rock uh, influenced uh, hip hop where do you think you will be in five years uh, okay, um, um, I'll probably uh, I'll probably increase my uh, my fan base I'll probably increase uh, roster on my label uh, I'll probably be working with uh, uh, PR companies or uh, publicists or even have a, a booking agent to uh, help uh, set up uh, tours for my artists and uh, work with other studios and uh, I guess have a full team by then. Can you share your social media links? Yes, uh, you can. You can find me on Facebook really easily. You just type in my name. Uh, there's a, there's brackets that says Paul Star. That's that's me. Uh, you can find my Twitter. Uh, Napash, uh, LinkedIn, you just type my, my name. I think I'm the only one that has that name because there are two Paul Napash, you know, in my, uh, my hometown. Uh, sometimes it's really hard for other 
numbers to uh, <laughs> not get mixed up, you know, with two names. And uh, I have Instagram, and my label, it's really easy. Uh, just type in uh, Polestar Entertainment, uh, you should find, find them. And what is the best way for fans or musicians interested in working with your label to contact you? Uh, I do have a, a forum on my uh, on my website. Uh, you, you just go on the uh, label label section. They can uh, they can just uh, uh, sign up the form and you know provide their. Uh, their names, uh, emails, brief bio, uh, if they have a website, uh, social uh, social links, uh, phone number, but you don't have to, uh, you know, uh, what they do and where they live. Is there anyone you'd like to acknowledge for offering financial or emotional support in your music career? Yes, yes. Uh, I would like to thank uh, my uh, potential uh, investors. You know that wanna invest in my uh, my new record label. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Clarence Snowboy, who really helped me and believed in me in the beginning. And you know. Uh, it kind of helped me to find uh, uh, different uh, funding organizations that I should contact, and you know, um, you know, I'm just really happy that you know it's going to happen, and you know, I'm ready to uh, take take my uh, music to the next level with, with my team. Do you have any new projects that you're working on or any of your artists are working on? Uh, yes, I do. I do have with uh, my artist, Manawan. I think he's working on uh, a couple new tracks. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help him to uh, shape up his, uh, his sound. And you know, right right now, I think he's using uh, instrumentals. You know, like I can just recreate them, and you know, uh, you know, I can't really use uh, copyrighted music, you know, without permission. So well, I just have to recreate it, create them to my my own style. All right, I'd like to give a very big thank you to my guest today, Paul Starr. As always, write your comments below, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. And for all of your promotion, marketing, as well as music career consulting needs, email ennisproductions at gmail.com.